What's up, guys? Brad here with Shiny Tech Things. Uh, earlier in the week, I came across uh, SPX Labs uh, online both on YouTube as well as on their website on an article on, on how to use IPMI to quiet down your server. Now, if you've seen some of my recent videos, I went ahead and purchased a Dell PowerEdge R330 and Using some of the methods that SPX Labs uh, has documented, I was able to quiet it down using a script that actually detects the temperature of the processor and then uses a switch in the script to be able to increase or decrease the speed of the fans based upon the load of the server. So in other words, if you're running a handful of VMs and it just spikes up real quick and it gets a little bit hot, then the fans will go ahead and kick up and then they will cool back down once the temperature lowers on the processor as well. So if this sounds like something that you're interested in, then go ahead and stay tuned and I'll show you how I did it. And be sure to go ahead and slap that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's get started. As you can already probably hear, you can actually hear my server running here. This is before I started to use IPMI to quiet it down. And I'll go ahead and get a little bit closer, and I will go ahead and overlay onto the screen somewhere here uh, some of the sound information as far as how much noise it is making using a sound meter on my phone uh, for both stock as well as after being modified by IPMI. script should kick in any second. And you can see how much quieter it got. So I stumbled across a video by SPX Labs that got me thinking, how can I create some sort of logic switch using PowerShell, since I'm running Hyper-V, to be able to dynamically change the speed of the fans on my server to keep it quiet, but still be able to make sure that it will not accidentally overheat and cause damage to itself. So what I've done is I've taken the uh, commands that he had on SPX Labs website, and I'll have a link in the description below on that as well and basically wrote a couple of PowerShell scripts to be able to first go ahead and determine the temperature of the processor and then second, based on that temperature, use some logic by creating a switch in PowerShell to be able to set the fan speed. So here in my example of PowerShell script, you go ahead and first define the IDRAC controller, so you will have to actually put in the IP address of your IDRAC, and then go ahead and set up your username and password on however you can access the IDRAC. And by using the IPMI tool, then here it is basically going to invoke this command here using the variables that are defined above to enable the fan control. Now, here I have a link for uh, hex conversion tables, so you can get a lot more precise with it, but basically I have defined 20% all the way up to 100% of the CPU speed as a command. Now, what I've done to be able to hopefully protect against the system from overheating and causing permanent damage to itself is I wrote a secondary PowerShell script that will basically kill whatever process that is hogging the CPU that is most likely affecting the temperature of the processor by being under that extreme load. Now if we scroll down here we can see that basically between the temperatures of 1 and 49 degrees Celsius then it's going to set the fan to 20 percent and then it invokes the expression of the command that we have defined up prior. And I have this uh, set up to just handle a couple of degrees so when I'm running say like a virtual machine on my server and it's under some load for a short period of time 
It'll spin up a little bit more for the fan speed until it cools down and then it drops back down again and gets quiet again. Now right here, my processor in my PowerEdge R330 is a E3 1220V6, which right here says that the maximum temperature in theory is roughly around 70 degrees Celsius. So down here I have it defined basically 67 degrees and higher. It's going to go ahead and just kill processes to cool down. Now, if you are running, say for example, a virtual machine that is just hammering the host, then there's the possibility that you could end up having some sort of uh, data corruption. So again, just make sure you have backups, use these scripts only at your own risk. And if it breaks something, then it breaks something. So be sure that you have a way to restore anything on your server. Uh, again, this is not meant for production use. And in a production use, you don't really care about noise at all, just because you're typically going to be in a data center with tons of airflow. Uh, but at home, you know, to uh, be able to record in a quieter environment, as well as not have my family complain about the excessive noise. I went ahead and put this together to uh, please them and also make a nicer recording environment for myself in my own home office. Now, if we look at the kill CPU hog, basically uh, we start, you know, we, we get like the cores and then we go ahead and look at the processes and we can go ahead and determine the high percentage usage and then all we do is we just stop that process and we force it to silently continue uh, and again this will only get invoked right here if we reach 67 degrees or higher now again if you found this useful uh, please go ahead and slap that like button down below on this video and consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. Feel free to leave a comment down below and let me know if there's anything that you would do different that might make this a better script. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. You've made it all the way through the video. And if you haven't already, please go ahead and slap that like button as it really does help. Uh, and if you didn't like the video, then go ahead and slap that dislike button. That also helps as well to let me know that uh, you didn't like it. If you have any questions, suggestions, or comments, just leave them in the comment section down below. And if you haven't already, please consider getting subscribed, going ahead and slap that subscribe button and tap that bell so that you can go ahead and be notified whenever I release a new video. And again, thank you for watching. Go ahead and slap that like button. Some comments in the section below. Uh, have any questions? If you have any questions or comments,